Hi everybody, this is Julie and this is my case study presentation on an individual with multiple sclerosis. So this is Teresa. She is 38 years old and she first came into my office about a year ago. And so at this point, um, she was talking about some various symptoms. Um, they included some numbness in her feet, um, some vision changes, and she describes these not necessarily as like blurry vision, but kind of this film over her right eye every once in a while that sometimes caused double vision, but sometimes just also kind of messed with her coordination. And um, along with this, she also had an electrical feeling down the back of her neck. So whenever she looked down at the floor, she could feel this just kind of this weird vibration or electrical kind of like strumming of a guitar string um, down her spine. And so she always knew that something was a little off with this, but it never really interfered. These symptoms like came and went and never were really that bad. So she brought it up a few times to previous doctors, but they never really did anything about it. It was never serious enough. She never really pushed for anything. Um, but in this case, when she came in, she said that she physically had to stop walking a few times, every few meters, because her feet were so numb and the numbness extended all the way up to her hips. Um, and she was feeling so uncoordinated and off balance that she, f she just really couldn't do it anymore. And so that kind of pushed her over the edge in this scenario and, and made her want to come in and just talk about these symptoms and what she could do. And so after having this discussion, um, I wanted to get an MRI, um, see what was going on, whether it was a tumor or maybe MS. Um, and so we sent her out and she did get an MRI and she was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. Um, so... This visit, this is about a year later after her diagnosis, and she's been on a medication for about a year and is kind of doesn't really know much about it. Um, her neurologist just recommended something new that she try, and she doesn't really know. She just kind of wants to discuss what they do and how they might help her. And then she's also visibly frustrated that her current medications don't seem to be working. Um, she's not getting any better. She said that she takes her pills every day just like she should, but her symptoms are getting worse. And there's been about a week that her symptoms have been super, super bad. And this happens every so often and it goes away, but it still, it still is like really debilitating during these times. And so, um, we wanted to discuss about that, what she's currently on, and then what her options are moving forward. Um, and then she also states that she has a sinus infection and is asking about a ZPAC. So I kind of wanted to take a really broad view real quickly about multiple sclerosis um, and what it is. And so briefly, the picture on the right here, you have a really nice nerve with some nice myelin sheaths over it. Um, and that's how typically nerves are nerves are formed and are that's how the nerve impulse is conducted. It goes really quick along those myelin sheets. Um, and then the bottom one has damaged sheath and it exposes the fibers, which really slows down the impulse. Um, and this could be it presents in a lot of different people in different ways and it's very unpredictable. Um, first of all, because the CNS is very complicated and our nervous system has a lot of functions that we don't fully understand all the time. Um, so, and also these damaged um, myelin sheaths could be in a variety of different nerves. Um, so that causes a variety of symptoms. And then this is an autoimmune process. And so we don't really know exactly why other than that it's our own cells that are attacking these sheaths. And so for Teresa's case, um, she has progressive relapsing remitting MS, which really just means the progressive part means that it gets worse over time. And that's what she's been experiencing. Um, but she's also expressing some frustration about not getting better. And so I wonder if she's um, going off some misinformation 
about her medication and how that might um i just really want to s discuss the idea that the goals of medication what are they for and for ms really our goal is to manage symptoms and delay progression um, there's not anything out there that's going to cure or reverse symptoms dramatically um, and so I think for her case that's really important to know in, in order to make some realistic goals and then the relapsing remitting portion of it just means that these symptoms come and go and there are exacerbations like she's been experiencing um, and so that's just kind of part of it the symptoms come and go and then, so looking at some broad medication options. There's three different categories here. The first one is disease-modifying agents, and these are typically what we see, um, specifically MS drugs. And so they're targeted for that disease, and what we're trying to do, like I mentioned, is reduce the number of relapses, delay progression, and limit new disease activity. So the goal is not to cure because we do not have that yet, um, but we can delay the progression. And then secondly, we can manage these relapses. Um, and usually that's done by a three to five day of course of corticosteroids. Um, there's definitely risk involved with this, as we know, but um, it helps shorten these periods of the relapse. And in doing so, we it's thought that maybe we can limit the damage to the myelin sheaths during this period, but there hasn't really been any evidence to say that it's better in the long term for the disease progression, um, but it does help with symptoms in these cases. And for Teresa, she says that she's really debilitating dur during this time, so that might be helpful for her. And then lastly, we can manage symptoms. And so in managing symptoms, there's a whole slew of different medications that we can use, um, but I saw, thought this picture was a good one. It list some of the common ones, um, and you can see the percentages there and what some people present with, what others don't. Um, for Teresa, she said she had some numbness, some vision difficulties, um, as well as some walking issues, but she doesn't have all of them, which is typical of some people coming in. They kind of just have a few of these ones, and then some are really bad and others that might not even be noticeable. So her current medication that she's on is called Tecfidera. Um, she's on 240 milligrams twice a day. Um, and what I first heard when she wanted to switch is I want to know why. So I think that it can either be because it's not working, um, because some of the side effects are bothering her too much, or it's becoming a safety issue. Um, so for her, it seems like that this medication is not working for her. She's saying that she's still having exacerbations and her symptoms are getting worse. So that's why I think that the neurologist might have suggested something new. But I also want to talk to her about some of these common side effects. For this case, it's flushing and GI issues. Um, and she said that those haven't been an issue. It was, she had a little bit of flushing early on. Um, but she did start on a lower dose and bumped up to this one, so it, it hasn't been that bad and it's got better over time. So I don't think that's why she wanted to switch. And then I also want to look at some of the serious side effects and see if she might be experiencing those and it might be a safety issue. Um, and so with this, you can get a disease called PML, which stands for Progressive Multifocal Leukoencephalopathy. And that's just like a it's an opportunistic viral infection of the brain. So it's rare, but it is a side effect of this. And so um, we really want to monitor white blood cell count and as well as liver enzymes. And it's required to do this on this medication. So I was able to look at her most recent lab values and her white blood cells look good as well as her liver enzymes. So I think that she, um, the neurologist wanted her to switch because of the efficacy. Um, because it does, doesn't seem to be working for her and people react different ways to different medications And so in this case, maybe it might be better to try something new So this new medication that she was recommended is called Tysabri um, It's a 300 milligram IV that's given every month um, And it's a pretty cool medication. It's a mon monoclonal antibody So it attacks a specific part of the leukocyte and what it does is it 
um, it interferes with the adhesion to the endothelial wall of the leukocytes, and with that, it um, inhibits their ability to cross the blood-brain barrier. And so when you have less um, in immune cells in the brain and in the CNS, you're going to have less damage to the myelin sheaths. And so that's how that works, and it has been seen to work really well. Um, some neurologists think that it's a good first-line medication um, because it has been shown to work, but others say that it's a little too risky to start right away um, because it does have an... We talked about PML a little bit in the her current medication, the Tecfidera, but this one does have a higher incidence. Um, and so we want to look at her risk profile. Um, and there's a few ways that we can do this. We can first look at her blood and we can look for an antibody called the anti-John Cunningham virus antibody. And so if you have this, it means you've been exposed to this virus and that puts you at a greater risk for developing PML. And then you can also look at prior immunosuppressant therapy that you've been on in the past, um, as well as the duration of therapy that you're expected on this medication, the Tessibri. Um, so all those considered, um, she has not been on immunosuppressant in the past, um, but I do want to look at that antibody test to see um, whether that's positive or negative and maybe weigh some of the risk and benefits um, with that. So she's also asking about some azithromycin. She wants a Z-Pack because she's been feeling pretty miserable for the past four days. She said she hasn't been sleeping, she's had a runny nose, she's had a cough, and this combined with her other symptoms that she's having, um, her other neurologic symptoms, she's just kind of going crazy and she's overwhelmed. Um, and she's heard that this just a Z pack works, and so that's what she just wants to do. She wants to feel better in this so she can start dealing with other things. Um, but this kind of goes into our case study a little bit in that it's only been four days. I don't really know if this is viral or bacterial. Uh, most cases resolve on their own. Um, so what I would do is I would suggest some symptomatic relief. Um, I want her to feel better and I want her to be able to sleep and recover from this. Um, so something like Sudafed over the counter um, doesn't interact with her current medication that she's on with the MS. So I think that would be a good option for her. Um, if she has been having a lot of these infections, um, if she's been in and out of urgent care, in or out of my office, um, I would be a little more concerned about maybe an interaction between her Tecfidera, her current medication, and maybe some immunosuppressant. Um, but in her case, her white blood cell count was good. It was within normal range. Um, as well as she said that she has not been having these infections. This just came on. She's been really stressed out. Um, and this happens and it, it made it a lot worse. Um, so with that, um, I wouldn't be that concerned about the immunosuppressant concern or side effect, um, but I would want her to feel better. So I would suggest some over-the-counter medications for that. So looking at her treatment plan moving forward, um, I think that this is something that would go through the neurologist because they are related to MS. So I don't think I'd be the one prescribing these. But I do think that it's important to let her know what her options are so she can decide for herself and bring it up to him and have a discussion with him or her, the neurologist, um, when the time comes. And so uh, I do want to make sure she gets a full risk calculation for the Tocibri and the, um, the risk for developing PML before starting that. But I do think that's a good medication that might work for her better than the one she's currently on. Um, the methylpregnazone is the steroid that can be given for exacerbations. And so she mentioned that she is really debilitating, debilitated during this time when she has these exacerbations. Hopefully we will lower the number that the number of times that this happens. Um, but it might not be a bad idea to have that to um, make sure she can get through that and 
um, during those times that it is really bad. And there's also this drug called Empyra. Um, it's a 10 milligram daily. It can go up to 20. Um, it's a potassium channel blocker that's been seen to help with walking. So um, that seems to be her main, her main complaint. And so that might be a good option to manage that um, moving forward um, as well as taking those other two when the time comes. And then these are my references. Um, it was pretty interesting driving into some MS medications. I never have thought about it before. Um, and it's interesting to see where it might go in the next few years. Um, so if you guys have any questions or comments, please let me know. Um, thank you for listening.